Greetings, Alex here yet again. You just can't get rid of me. Now, I keep getting caught up in uh, waiting for parts for these various projects that I have going on. So I thought, why don't I put like a nice quick video out? And usually my quick videos turn into like hour long videos. I'm actually gonna keep this one quick. So I just thought, what's something I have lying around that I can do some basic testing on and it's just gonna be like a fundamental thing. And I thought, well, I just ordered a whole bunch of different cooling fans. Why don't I just do like fan theory real quick, real basic fan theory. And this is all information that's fairly well known throughout the interwebs and the community, but I figured I would put it up here in case somebody who's just a stark newbie comes, stumbles across my humble channel in cyberspace and is just looking for basic information. So here we go, cooling fan basics, let's do it. So the two major types of fans that we're going to be talking about are axial versus radial or centrifugal, whatever you call them. So now we have crappy drawing time, so I can explain this visually. On the left we have the axial fan, and on the right we have the radial fan or centrifugal fan. Now the way that they work is your centrifugal fan is going to suck in air from the side and blow it out a small duct, whereas your axial fan is going to blow it right from the back into the front, right along that central axis whereas your centrifugal fan or radial fan is going to blow it out at, well, a radius. And depending on the situation, each fan is going to have its advantages or disadvantages. Axial fans have a higher airflow, they're lighter weight and tend to be lower power. But on the downside, they're also low pressure and they produce a lot of turbulence. Now, if we compare that to our radial fans, they have much higher pressure and consistent airflow but they're heavier, there's more noise, and they tend to be a little bit more power hungry just by design. But we are going to key in on the high pressure and consistent airflow of the blowers. And the reason for that is because of things like this. Now I whipped this up very quickly, and this is an example of taking a regular axial fan and directing the flow through a duct into a surround shroud to cool your prints. And it's kind of crappy. And we'll see why in a second. Whoa, Alex, how dare you insult my Printo Master 5000S Mark 2.75. Look, I'm not the only person who's acknowledged this. If we look at the kind of not so great uh, ducted axial shroud on the Ultimaker 1, and then compare that to the slightly better, like more open axial design of the Ultimaker 2, which is a little bit better, and then into the even better dual blower design of the Ultimaker 3, they have obviously realized this phenomenon as well. But stop the record here. <laughs> Now, far be it from me to tell a successful company how to run their business, but if I were trying to sell a printer, I would not use a print that exhibited these artifacts of striations and moire patterns and uneven wall, especially if I were trying to charge six grand for it. My layers are beautiful, beautiful. Anyway, at least we know their fan design is better than printer bots throw air and hope for the best kind of action. I know, I know, stop insulting my Printo Master 5000. But take heart if you do have one of these setups, I'll give a couple different options toward the end of the video. Now, getting back to the subject at hand, way back in 2015, before I had to do things like edit 30 seconds of my dumb face staring at a camera out of video because I completely forgot what I was saying, I stumbled across a website called disequalantis.com slash cooling tests where a fellow compared a bunch of different styles of shroud and open designs of both axial and radial fans. And this was all on his printer bot. And you can go to that website or just look here and see what the results are. See the general upward trend from the printer bot open to Ultimaker 1 to Ultimaker 2 to Ultimaker 3, etc., etc. Consequently, Prusa i3 has always used a blower in a sort of guided funnel type of a design, so that's pretty good. And dual blowers, well guided, is even better. For completeness, since we're going to be referencing this later in the video, not only does that deal with cooling of overhangs, but it also has to do with the uh, warpage just because of the directionality, is that a word, of the fans themselves. So enough of other people's data, let's roll up our sleeves and get nerdy. I'd originally planned to show all the math from beginning to the end, but you're gonna see in a second why I had to stop at a certain point. So in terms of the logical or obvious math for axial volumetric flow, as in, you know, the CFM ratings that we get, it's the duct area times our velocity, i.e. the duct area in feet squared and the feet per minute, or, pi times r squared times column length. Length, all right, that's a funny typo, so I'm gonna leave it in there. 
And in order for that to be useful, we're going to have to know our axial velocity, which is our effective pitch of our blades times the RPM of the fan. And that's going to tell us the length of our column. But the actual math behind optimal pitch of those blades is quite complicated. And that's where my brain just sort of checked out. So anyway, thus ends the obvious math. Now, I also had no clue about how the math for the radial fans worked, so I actually had to look that up. And I haven't verified this, but from a couple sources, it looks like the math is RPM1 over RPM2 times D1 divided by D2 cubed, where CFM2 is CFM1 times RPM2 divided by RPM1. Sure, why not? I'm just gonna go and end the math here because experiments and simulations seem to be much more useful. But, but, we didn't waste all of our time with that math because basically we can boil it down to flow equals duct area times velocity. The operative word there being duct and turbulence, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. And the reason ducts are important is because of pressure. Now, looking back at our little axial surround shroud here, we're gonna to get to the bottom of this through some ghetto fabulous testing. Now, these are the MacGyver meets Mr. Wizard's world kind of situations that make these videos fun for me. So this is a fairly common test for airflow. And what we're gonna do is take a 13 gallon trash bag, roll it back till it's about 10 gallons, just to make the math easier if I need to do that. And then we're gonna tape that to a rigid opening, a coffee can in our case, and then use that to inflate and then time how long it takes a particular fan to blow up that bag using different ductwork and different styles of fan, et cetera, et cetera. And here's an example of how that works. You've probably seen this done online, other places for like PC cooling fans and that sort of thing. And my results for this particular fan were about nine seconds. Now I use this fan for the initial experiment because it's a name brand fan and I can look up the data sheets. This is just a regular old Delta something or other. So for example, this is what our data sheets would look like. Here's our pressure curve where we plot air pressure against air flow, and we can compare that to the actual specific parameters of the fan and compare that to something like a small blower fan like we have right here. Now notice the at zero airflow pressure here is close to two, whereas with our axial fan, we're all the way down to 0.5, which is you know about a quarter of what we had with the similar radio fan. Now, if we look at our fan curves, our radial on the left and our axial on the right, our knee is in approximately the same place here because of the way that I scaled these, but the actual pressure is way off, like six versus 30 or 20 or whatever, showing us that under pressure, our radial fan is going to do much better. And in open situations, our axial fan is going to move much, much more air. Now, my particular interest in this came because I want to use this small delta blower, actually two of them, in an experimental uh, hot end or extruder or whatever that I'm going to be using for a printer that I'm designing. And I need to know how it's going to fare against the usual suspects. And I'll be providing much more detailed analysis when that video comes out. But for right now, let's just look at some common fans and simple situations. So our rogues gallery is going to include a regular GDS time uh, 30 millimeter hot end fan, a generic nameless 40 millimeter fan, a very nice 40 millimeter fan, one of our super quiet 60 millimeter fans, a super psychotic 60 millimeter fan that I pulled out of a server, and then a uh, PC CPU cooling fan. Don't worry, I'll spare you the boredom of watching a bag inflate 12 times. Just the facts, ma'am. And for comparison, we're gonna be blowing these through a 60 millimeter long duct with a 500 millimeter cross-sectional area, obviously with a reducer on the larger fans, and then see how they fare against each other. Actually, when I tested these smaller fans, the results were so poor that they were not even fully inflating the bag. So I'll just give the open numbers. From worst to best, our generic nameless 40 millimeter fan took 52 seconds. The GDS time 30 millimeter fan took 45 seconds. Our Nidic fan took 31 seconds. And this was a 24 volt van that I was running at 12 volts. So that's pretty impressive. However, moving to the larger diameter stuff, our 60 millimeter fan inflated it in 11 seconds. And then our psychotic lop your fingers off server fan managed to do it in three seconds. 
But the fan I'm going to be focusing on is this, just a Cooler Master CPU fan. It's meant for higher static pressure, and it's extremely large diameter relative to the blower fan that I'm going to be using. So I figured Overkill would give the best example. And this is what it looks like right here. Copyright FrostyTech.com. This is just leftover from an old PC uh, build of mine. And again, we're going to be comparing it against this teensy weensy little blower fan, relatively speaking. So the specs of our PC fan are, it's a 92 millimeter fan running at 2800 RPM. It pushes about 55 C CFM and it runs at 12 volts, 0.26 amp, which is about the same power level as our blower. So like we said, they're a little bit less in energy efficient and louder, but you'll notice that the CFM is much, much lower, like five times lower than that axial fan, even though it's running at a much higher RPM. Basically, what it boils down to in our axial versus blower test is a huge fan versus a tiny radial fan, much higher CFM, but they're running at the same power. And just doing a little bit of envelope here to show you the area of the opening of the axial fan, it's 6,362 millimeters versus 500 millimeters for the radial fan. Now, I already had a 3D printed shroud for this because I use this as like an auxiliary cooler. So for the large axial fan, I also gave the numbers for just the duct and not the tube because I thought that would be useful as comparison. Now the numbers are for just the bare fan with no shroud or reducer, it took five seconds to inflate the bag. With a shroud, that jumped up more than double to 12. And then through the tube, it jumped up nearly four times to almost 20 seconds. Now let's compare that to our tiny, tiny little blower. Bear, it's nearly twice as slow as the bear numbers for the axial fan at 11 seconds. But when I put the restrictive tube on it to produce a little bit of back pressure, it didn't really change that much at all, just a couple seconds. So overall in our real world in quote situations, our huge axial fan did worse than our tiny little blower fan. So as the philosopher Keanu Reeves would say, whoa. Now, I wanted to show more real world examples, but I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time setting up experiments on what's supposed to be a quickie video. So under the fair use, fair dealing policy, I'm going to show you uh, some experiments from other YouTubers and give you their names. A fellow on YouTube named uh, Roy Raptor was trying to find the best shroud for his TiVo tarantula. And he printed out a few things off of Thingiverse. Uh, very similar designs, almost identical designs, one being a blower and the other being virtually the same shroud, but using an axial fan. And these were the overhang cooling results he got for the blower version. And then for the axial version, these are the results he got much more droopy. So you can go check out his results with some other shrouds if you wanted to see that. But wait, there's more. It's not all just about static back pressure in a reducer tube. We're also talking about inconsistent flow. I mentioned earlier that another advantage of a blower is that it has a consistent stream of air as opposed to an axial fan, which has a much choppier stream of air as you are disturbing the stream of air as the blades are slicing through it, resulting in a much more pulsed airflow pattern. And we have the additional issues of turbulence and null zones. Now, I don't have access to SolidWorks or ANSYS anymore, so this is from the YouTube channel SolidWorks Tutorial. It's a uh, simulation of an axial fan to show you the flow. As you can see right here, the air comes in and then it blows out in kind of a vortex pattern. And then there's a lot of turbulence at the end. And additionally, you get a bit of a null zone right here in the middle, which presumably is what's pointing at our part. But you might be thinking, okay, but why ducting at all? We know that axial fans are no good at it, but they put out so much more air. And as they say in the racing biz, there's no replacing displacement. Now, hold up their gearhead, because we're going to talk about focusing our airflow here. Because sure, we could make a huge fan and just blast it at the part, but what else could happen? Now, if we're using a particular filament that both needs a part cooling fan and a heated bed for adhesion, which is sometimes PLA, but not always, if we're just throwing air around willy nilly, we are dropping the temperature of our bed down artificially, which is not the end of the world unless you have one of those beds that tends to flex up and down slightly as it heats up and cools down and cause uneven extrusion and layer heights. 
Secondly, we're also going to be blowing across our heater block, which means that that's going to be uneven and require more heating unless you put a silicone sock on it or make a Kapton burrito out of it, et cetera, et cetera. So we can deal with that. And then the third problem is that we are going to be blowing on the bottom of our part and possibly lead to warping. And I actually ran into this issue recently with some uh, pure virgin uncolored PLA, which has a very high shrinkage ratio. And it was actually lifting off the bed on some of the detailed parts. And I had to use kind of a, a brim to hold it down, which was quite annoying because I don't usually have to do that. So that is all to say that we are going to want to direct our airflow toward the important areas and guide it away from the areas that we don't want to be blasting with cold air. And for that situation, we are going to need some kind of duct or guide. So we should probably tend toward a blower that deals better in those situations, unless it's a fairly open type of a design. Now, earlier, I did promise options if you had an axial fan with a shroud and for some reason you just can't fit a blower on there. So let's take a look at that. Obviously, you can rig up an axial to radial blower of some kind if you have the vertical space for it. But that will require kind of a significant height. I guess you could offset it a little bit and aim it toward the side. But, you know, that's all dependent on the printer and what it is you're going to knock into. So if I whip up these shrouds real quick, like I said before, the problem is that we're getting a lot of static pressure because of our little nozzle here, decreasing the surface area of our opening. So you could just use beast mode fans, which are going to produce more noise and they're going to take up more space. But another option is to just use fans in series which will actually do better than twice a single fan. So that's an option right there. You're not going to get blower performance, but if you're right on the borderline, you're going to get significantly more pressure at your CFM than you would with just a single fan. Now, that's not quite the way that it works with the blower. With the blower, if you parallel them, you're going to get more airflow at the same pressure. And there are some other tricks that you can use to cut down turbulence, such as a intake funnel, or to decrease the turbulence coming out from the other side. You could use a guide, but we'll have to test that later because there are too many parameters for me to have to design and print all of those. So we'll do it when we get to our extruder tests. And then just as a final thought, this all really depends on your cooling needs. If you're printing with very detailed layers, like very small layer height, in something like, you know, PLA at fairly low speeds, then you could be fine with just about anything as long as you're not, you know, cooling down your hot end or something like that. So this may be a moot point, but remember, you can always turn your fan down in your firmware or in your slicer or on the go. Turning it up, well, you're kind of limited by the physical properties of your setup. So bottom line, if you're trying to move or exchange massive quantities of air in a fairly open space, an axial fan is the way to go. If you're trying to push air through a duct through static pressure at a more consistent velocity, then you should probably be looking into blowers. There you go. Thanks a lot for watching the video. Hope it was something helpful in there for you. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments for the video below. If you dig my content, I always have support links in the video description, so please check those out. I'll be getting more content out soon, and until then, get out there and make something awesome.